Hey guys, Justin with Technical Gamer here, and today we're talking about Valve's Steam Link, which is Valve's inexpensive solution for 50 bucks uh, to do some PC gaming in the living room or family room on the big screen TV without having to either uh, disconnect and log your, your big rig out to your family room and connect it to your TV, or running a really long HDMI cable and then hoping that your wireless controllers can still sync with the dongle that's on your PC that's in your office or bedroom. Uh, so this is a solution for a lot of people to be able to be more social with their PC games instead of just sitting in their office or sitting in their bedroom playing, uh, you know, without other people in the, in the family, in the, in the home. So, but which is the best and which is the easiest are actually two very different things. First, let's talk about the hardware and what you get in the box with the Steam Link. So let's check that out. So here's the retail packaging. Let's get rid of that little box here. We're gonna open up the inside box, and we've got some documentation. But I don't care about that. And then here's where it's all at right here. Here's the Steam box. Let's set that aside. So here is the Steam Link itself, and it's got a hardware H.264 decoder in it. That's where all the magic happens. It also has dual band in Wi-Fi and AC Wi-Fi along with Bluetooth 4.0, so lots of stuff in there. And we've got some ports. On this one side we have the USB 2.0 port, one of those right there. And then on the back, we got all the rest of the stuff here. So Let's see, we've got the HDMI port, the Ethernet port, and two more USB 2.0 ports, along with our AC power jack. So inside this container is some global uh, power adapters. So global power adapters for Europe and Asia, uh, different power formats for your country. Uh, so you're pretty much covered. If any of these look familiar, then they're going to fit your wall jack just fine. I think you're pretty much. I think every major wall outlet standard is covered here inside the box. And then we've got a few more things inside. We have, of course, the power uh, block itself, which standard it comes with the North American plug. So you just got the North American plug there, but you can take this off. So uh, this can actually be removed. You can just pull this up and put in one of the uh, different jacks. If you're traveling or if you live in Europe, then you should be covered. Uh, I will say, though, that this... This is kind of hard to get off. It's difficult to kind of pull off. It's a very tight fit, and it's difficult to get on. So, and then we have a HDMI cable. Looks to be about a six foot long HDMI cable. And then finally, we have a Ethernet cord, and this is a flat style, a flat ribbon style Ethernet cord. So it's also about six feet. Hey guys, alright now we are on the Steam Link now and we are inside the Steam Link's interface inside its own internal menu uh, showing off some settings here. This is the Steam Link client quality settings. Uh, I am, I have it currently set to the 1080p preset with unlimited latency and it's set to uh, beautiful. So I want visual quality uh, over uh, latency right now and the reason I'm doing that is because uh, I'm running a wired network. Valve strongly recommends running the Steam Link over a wired network and I'll show you some differences uh, a little later as to what the difference between a wired network is and a wireless network. Uh, you can see there it shows your wireless networks. You can change some DHCP settings as well and IP settings. Uh, including uh, which network you want to pick pick and connect to. Uh, you can also adjust your display scaling if the scaling doesn't quite match your TVs. You can change languages if you don't speak English uh, or if you speak another language. Uh, but one of the coolest features here in the Steam Leak is the Steam Leak's uh, Bluetooth features, how you can actually sync different Bluetooth controllers to the Steam Link 
uh, including the uh, Steam controller, but you can also sync other controllers too, including the DualShock 4 controller by Sony, even the Wii U Pro controller for the Nintendo Wii U. All of these sync up and play uh, really, really well on the Steam Link, and they act a lot like a Xbox 360 controller. It pretty much emulates an Xbox 360 controller uh, through the Steam Link uh, interface through through the game. So if the game supports Xbox 360 controller then there you go. It's going to think your controller is a 360 controller. Um, you can change what kind of audio you're having coming through, whether it's stereo or 5.1 or quadraphonic. And you can check for updates. Right now I am using the latest non-beta, so the, the latest stable build for the Steam Link. And my client, uh, the Steam uh, uh, app running on Windows, is also updated to the latest stable version. All right, on to some game testing, and the first game I wanted to test was Sonic All-Stars Racing Transform. This is a really fast-paced uh, action racing kind of game. So this game runs really well for me on my PC locally. It runs at 1080p 60, max settings. My PC can easily run this game. Uh, so we should expect to get very similar results over a wired Steam Link, right? Uh, and really quick while I'm going through the stage selection here, I my PC is a AMD FX6300 at 4.1 gigahertz with an R9 270 2 gigabyte graphics card and 8 gigabytes of DDR3 1600 RAM. So this game easily runs on my PC with those settings uh, and those specs. So let's see what we get over the Steam Link. Uh, this game is a great test for this because it's easy to tell and it's such a fast-paced game if we're getting latency or if we're getting lag uh, it should show up and it should show up pretty quickly so starting off with the race now that we're picking up some speed uh, you can see down up there we have a few a little bit of feedback rather from the steam link and I'm getting 1080p right at 60 frames a second so we're, we're getting exactly what we want uh, the action looks fluid uh, the animation looks great and as I'm playing it, I'm not getting any perceivable lag. I cannot tell uh, from my perception if when I'm turning the car, if I'm getting any kind of lag. So this game works great on the Steam Link, and I cannot tell the difference between playing over the network or playing locally on my PC. So this one works awesome. Let's check out the next game. Okay, now it's on to a fighting game, and one of my favorite fighting games is Mortal Kombat 9. So we're ch going to check out how quickly our inputs register into such a fast-paced game like a fighter. And already you can look down at the bottom left and we are getting 1080p at again right at 59.60 frames per second. So it's looking great, it feels great, and just like Sonic, uh, I cannot tell the difference between whether I'm playing locally or if I am playing over the network. So, and I'm not that great at this game. I mean, I'm alright with Katana or whatever. But uh, from what I can tell, playing the computer or if I were to play somebody, you know, like a two-player game over the Steam Link, it would be just fine. I can't tell the difference between playing uh, at my PC or, or, or playing over the network in this case. So it works just fine. All right, now it's time to check out a 2D game to see if the Steam Link can handle uh, some games, even in the more simplest of settings. Uh, we want to check to make sure that this game is going to run even when we're not using a traditional DirectX uh, interface. So we've got Castle Crushers by Behemoth Games. This is the Steam Edition. They recently have updated this game a lot uh, to include uh, better visuals. Uh, and I think an extra mini game as well. So this game's a great party game, and it just kind of fits right in with what the Steam Link has to offer for everybody. Uh, and just like the two previous games, even though it's a little different being 2D, we're still getting rock solid 60 frames per second at 1080p. Uh, and as much as I beat up on these guys, I can't really tell a difference between uh, being at my PC uh, or playing over the network with the Steam Link. So. Just like with Sonic All-Stars and Mortal Kombat, this game seems to run run great. It's a lot of fun. Uh, and this this I think this is this kind of piece of equipment is gonna breathe new life into games like this. Now you can actually get a bunch of people together, uh, grab a bunch of controllers you've probably got laying around, 
uh, and sync with the uh, Steam Link, PS4 controller, Wii U controller, Xbox 360 controller, and uh, beat up a bunch of cartoons. Alright, now it's time to check out a non-Steam game, in this case Guild Wars 2. So you can actually add pretty much any uh, game to the Steam app if it's not already in Steam. Uh, and then you can play it over the Steam League. So Guild Wars Team seems like a pretty good test for that. Uh, and this game works pretty well. Now I am losing a few frames per second, I think, here over the Steam League versus the PC. And there could be that could be where the latency is coming into play as it's pulling information off the internet. And then I'm also having to pull information through my network. So I'm averaging around 35 to 45 frames per second. But I typically get somewhere in the range of 40 to 50 frames per second, so I'm losing a little bit of frames per second there, and probably adding a little bit of latency. But when I attack some of these uh, monsters here, I can't tell the difference between when I'm hitting the buttons on my, my Bluetooth keyboard to when the action's happening on screen. So as far as I can tell, there's a little latency that I can perceive. But I am losing a few frames per second, and that could be on the CPU side of things as well. As this game does uh, have a lot of read writes to the uh, hard disk, and a lot of calls to the CPU. So Otherwise, the game works, works great. So now we're checking out a more recent game, Rise of the Tomb Raider. And in this instance, we are getting some significant performance loss by playing over the Steam Link. Here I am in the Geothermal Valley section of the game, and I am getting no more than 30 frames per second. The game seems to be capping at 30 frames per second while being streamed, even over a wired network. And I'm getting hard drops into the mid-low 20, 24 frames, 23 frames. However, when I play locally on my PC, the lowest I get is 35 frames, and the highest I get is 45 frames in this same area, doing this same section of gameplay. So I'm not sure if this is an issue with the Steam Link, or with my video cards, drivers, uh, or with the game itself. So, but this is one instance where a game doesn't quite play the way you would want it to over the Steam Link. So another game I wanted to check out was Ultra Street Fighter 4, or is it Street Fighter 4 Ultra? To see how well it performed with such a fast-paced fighting game. However, when I tried to use my 360 controller, which was connected directly into the Steam Lake through the wireless adapter, uh, it would not see the controller, it wouldn't register it. Uh, the keyboard worked, however the keyboard worked in the menus just fine. However, after I got through the menu selection and tried to start a match, hilariously using the keyboard, it apparently was registered as player 2. So when I hit a key in the versus match start screen, it thought another challenger was coming into play and went back to the character select screen. So this is an instance where this game just doesn't work at all with the Steam Link. It works fine locally with the controller. Uh, but with the Steam Link, it won't work at all, and that's actually hilarious because in the promo video for the Steam Link, you can see some guys from Team Fortress 2 hanging out playing this, playing Street Fighter 4 uh, with the Steam Link with some Steam controllers. So, yeah, and I don't know if it works perfectly fine with the Steam controller. I kind of doubt it because they're both using X input, I believe. But yeah, this game is definitely a bust over Steam Link. Dragon Canyon. Choose your typical C class. So how does the Steam Link perform over a wireless network? Well, that's a really good question. So in this case, I'm testing it on my dual band in wireless router, which is about 25 feet away from the Steam Link in another room. Uh, and already we're starting to see some issues with the slow network error showing up there, where we're getting some sudden frame rate drops and stutters in the gameplay in this intro cinematic where the uh, network cannot just keep up with the game, it just gets a little behind. And we see a few more frame stutters here in the footage. Overall though, I was actually surprised where the game ran really well the majority of the time on wireless network with just the occasional slow network error and we would get some sudden frame rate drops. But actually in this case for Sonic, about 95% of the time it worked really, really well. Now. With wireless, it's going to completely depend on your situation. 
Uh, dual band in or, or Wi-Fi AC is strongly recommended. And even then, you still need to be relatively close to your router and have a more recent modern router. And Mortal Kombat 9, we saw some really heavy stutter stuttering in the beginning of a match that was then just cleared up and the game ran really, really smoothly. So wireless, not as good as wired, of course, especially for faster paced games, but it's a workable solution if you have a pretty ideal setup where you're not too far from the router and you're at least using dual band in or AC. It's doable, it's workable, and uh, it's overall pretty good other than the occasional hiccup. Alright guys, thank you for watching my Steam Link video review. Overall, I think the device is really, really great. It works on pretty much every game I threw at it with a few exceptions. Rise of the Tomb Raider, including Tomb Raider 2013, would not quite uh, work well. Uh, they both seem to be capped at 30 frames a second uh, while streaming to the Steam Link. And that was with even my AMD hardware encoding enabled from my video card. Another issue that did happen, uh, and this happened in Dark Souls 2, the game ran really well on the Steam Link, but uh, the persistent item and weapon icons that show on the game would get these weird um, compression artifacts that would kind of drag across the screen uh, and if you pause the game or went to another menu or switch screens they would go away and then maybe sometimes come back so but overall the device is is pretty good it does have a few flaws but overall it's a really really good option for playing your games on the big screen in the family room and I think it's worth the 50 bucks so thank you for watching my video and please like and subscribe and I hope to catch you guys on the next video. See ya.